Hello, this is Bobby at Copel TV Repair with a brief uh, instruction how to test power supply boards. Give me a second, let's see them. Where do I catch it so it doesn't shock me? Uh, this is BN44-00847F. The same testing procedure will apply for the 874A slash B slash C slash D. They are different boards all based on the same PCB. Uh, you can see some of those. This is E and F probably are based on this particular one. But there is extremely similar one that is uh, for the A and B and C models. The difference is relatively minor uh, in regards to the output format connector, for example, for the LEDs, of course. Possibly also the output voltages, but 99% of the board is the same. The most common failure on that board is the power factor correction circuit, which is uh, a circuit that takes the input AC voltage <coughs> and rectified rather uh, input voltage, which is measured at the mains filter capacitors. It normally is 160 volts and the power factor correction circuits does two things. One of them, the more visible one, is raise it to about 390 volts. Uh, in the process that allows it to correct the filter higher voltage also ensures lower current. It, it doesn't matter, you can Google what it does and see other videos that explain these in details. What you need to know for uh, the sake of this video is that the most common failure is about here. And you would usually see one of those four capacitors blown and there will be a darker area which I cleaned up here. It was on this side. All this on the back of the capacitor on the left side was dark on the board. Uh, this is clean. You can very easily see that those have been replaced. Uh, and uh, the most obvious indication of something not working will be that this fuse, the main fuse, will be blown open. Before you try anything, before you test the board, before you plug it in a circuit, even though if it has failed, uh, you would, and if it's your TV, you already know, basically. But the most simple thing that you should do before you start anything, is use a meter to test for continuity on that fuse. If you do have continuity, you know, the continuous beeping and everything, that fuse is good and that's, and that's a good thing. You, it, it is okay to test the board and make sure that, plug it in and see the rest of what I'm about to, to show you. Um, I suggest testing the board outside of the TV before you try it in, in one, if only because not everybody, not always, will have a TV. I, for example, do not have one. But 99.9% .9 of the time, it is fairly safe to test that board outside of a TV, bench test it. And if you do it right, you have 99.9% .9 chance that uh, your finding will actually be sufficient to make the board work or not work in the actual TV. So. Um, first, what does the board take in? The board take in 110 volt AC here, and what does it output? What it outputs is several things. They are listed somewhere on a few small tables, but the most simple way you can find out is just look at the output connectors. This one, this one, that one. And if you close up on the connectors, you will find out that this one outputs 13 volts. Just 13 volts DC, half of the pins are ground, half are 13. The next connector is the controlling connector, the most complicated one. It has ground, it has power on command, it has power for the backlight unit. And the backlight unit is this stuff, the, the connector that powers the LED strips. We'll get to it for a second. This is just BLU. Here is just a command for that to activate. Uh, OD on off overdrive maybe extra driver I am not really 100% sure what is DD on off analog dimming this is signal for dimming the output for the LED drivers and 13 volts again those will be the same most likely 
and this is just four circuits for the apparently four channel let's see one plus one minus one circuit second circuit plus minus third circuit okay so there, there are five circuits five LED circuits and this is outputting and let me see what do we have we have channel four those are the five circuit channel one channel two channel three channel four there's got to be a channel five somewhere if it outputs channel five because again different versions of the board may output different things this one i do not see channel five it's got to be somewhere here channel two channel three i'm guessing this one only has four outputs even though it is designed to have five let's see on the back side real quick where it gets it does look like they are connected and it's got to be somewhere on the right side like this what they call channel three okay i will look on that later and this is not the biggest deal anyway because i'll get i'll get back to that in a moment when we get to measuring those what really really matters is there is a standby voltage, this is the voltage that is needed by the TV when you power on the board and it just provides very minimal um, power to the power to the main board which is basically just listening to see when are you gonna want to start the TV whether by pressing a button or hitting the remote very low power is needed for that it's called standby power very low voltage standby voltage and in some TV this is just some small 5 volts or even 3.3 volts but in larger more recent ones they make it as you can see see here about 7.5 volts and when you start on the tv the main board sends a command back to this power and this is the same for pretty much all LED tvs <laughs> not to mention pretty much all tvs uh, and sends a signal back this will be the power on command here power on it sends something like 5 volts logical one here and this is a command for this board to start working wake up all the other circuits wake up the pfc circuits wake up everything else that it, it does wait for a signal to activate the output for the leds because they are activated later on when everything else is ready but basically um the power on command wakes up the rest of the circuits on that board and produces output on the other voltages voltage output connectors now if you test this without the tv it is wired produced like most samsung boards not all but most of them not the plasmas uh, it is made so that it automatically activates itself in other words if you just plug this in the power that board is going to self-activate and it's going to produce all the voltages on the out well first of all it did click let me not talk and you can hear it so i'm turning it off this is the relay and you will hear a click if you come closer to here i don't know if you heard it but we are changing to dc one of the very first things that board is now activated it it behaves without anything connected to it as if it has been told to power on everything the most visible and the most important thing that you want to measure in regards to that is the output to the filter main filter capacitors and this will be 390 volts 397 it may fluctuate from board to board it may be 392 it may be 393 it may be 389 it's it doesn't really matter couple of volts difference on a 390 nominal output voltage having that voltage out there is statistically 99 percent certain already telling you that this board is working fine but you don't have to believe that you can go and measure the rest of the voltages by following those nice labels here this tells you that here on this jumper apparently to ground they don't tell you to that but you want to ground the other pin like here and sorry what you will do is you will measure to ground on this pin and they tell you 
that you should have 13 volts when the board is activated on this little come on yeah on this little label here so you have 12 35 when it's on and we have 13 that is totally acceptable they don't really nail it down and when loaded when the board is loaded it may actually drop a little i don't know if it will drop uh, 0 0.65 but 13 is absolutely acceptable going by this you can also try what is this ground is the bottom so i'm touching the bottom pins and it's zero and i'm gonna touch the upper pins now and we'll have the 13 volts so this connector is fine this is fine you can go and check those if you want again most of the top connectors will be 13 volts they are and that brings us to something that personally i don't think really you have to do because it statistically is never a problem but you can nothing is stopping you as you can see here uh, channel 4 can be measured plus minus on those two jumpers so if you just stick this here and this here that gives you 248 volts if you look up somewhere on those tables uh, this output table for what it should be producing that's gonna match up more or less but from experience more or less is because again it matters where there is a load or no load currently it's probing on the on somewhere on the range of the output voltages because this is constant current driver it varies output voltage trying to produce a constant current that is preset so voltage output on those because they're leds actually does vary depending on the load uh, so it may not match perfectly what is said here it will be on the higher range of what it's capable of producing attempting to get a current that it matters on some boards it may be zero different types of boards it may be trying it so fast that you cannot see it so we just tried channel four let me see what else can we do that is another example those two it's going to be the same i mean it's working and you can do the rest with the other ones that tells you that this board is working uh, you have output voltages you don't know exactly what they have to be or rather you know what they have to be by table here if you go and read it properly which board is that of the different ones which connector is connected is it le75 L sorry l75 e8 in or is it 4082 inch that depends on the board number but those are things that simply do not fail i mean if you have a problem there uh, you will want a replacement board rather than repairing your board what you want to know is whether that board comes up whether it raises the pfc again without the board being activated if that board is connected to a tv and you're testing it it's not going to be showing you 390 until you start the tv if the main board works fine it's going to be showing you 160 volts and none of that well the 13 volts may be showing on one of the connectors is something around 7.5 they may be 7 they may be 8 it's going to work but this is how you test outside of a tv now there is a very small percent chance that this board may fail when connected even though it tests everything there may be a failure on it that will only show when you actually load it when you load it with the main board here when you load it with the circuits here this chance always exists practically and statistically it is very small you should just be aware that it does exist but you can pretty safely assume that if your board tests that way out of a tv then the problem is somewhere else usually it's either the main board or the led strips and in regards to the led strips i have said in many other videos um and i will repeat again this is a constant current driver it is trying to hold current to a fixed level and that is kind of difficult uh the challenge there is that with the temperature the leds when they start working more the internal resistance changes they also have a different resistance at startup to get them started than in operational mode so this circuit is capable of changing its output voltage to a certain range and uh, making sure that the circuits that it's designed to power start up properly and operate properly with some minor variations thanks to a temperature let's say some diode gets shorted 
and the rest of them are supposedly continuing to work. However, it is a relatively narrow range between the minimal and the maximal voltage that this can vary in order to secure a constant current. This is very different compared to universal LED driver device. And so sometimes power supply boards uh, with a built-in LED drivers or just LED drivers may fail to light up a screen but if you test with a universal LED driver, it can actually show that it works. Why? Well, because the universal driver can test anything from a single diode to a circuit of 20, 30 diodes, uh, you know, ranging all the way up to, say, 400 volts. So it can range anything between 3 volts to, to 300 volts. Those cannot do that, most of them are not designed to do anything like that. So it's possible if you have a bad circuit, it is possible that a original power supply board may fail and it will not start and the TV will not start properly. But if you test with an LED, universal LED tester, because of its wide range, it may actually light up the circuit. That confuses a lot of technicians. It's pretty simple to understand, I hope. I'm just putting a special attention to it here because it comes up often lately and it is something that I believe people should should be aware of. Other than that, I have not seen any one of the boards that come here for repair. This board belongs to a customer that initially TM. I'm going to send them that video. Actually, it's somewhere here. Yeah, I'm sorry. Not allowed to give you customer information. But um, that's it. Hopefully you learned something. Best of luck with your repairs.